Okay, everyone. So uh, basically, I provided a file for you, um, um, Lecture 21, this XX file that you just saw me open really quickly. <laughs> that's the file that's up there on Blackboard right here. So what you'll see on Blackboard is your um, your um, Lecture 21 model, which is detail views, note blocks, and then you'll see this. This is a compressed file, so you'll have to download it and unzip it. If you have any problems with that, let me know, and I'll try and share the files through here. I may do that anyway for the door images. There's seven door images, door one through door six, and door six has two left. And so when you get in your file, what you'll actually see is this. But this isn't the first thing we're going to do today. But this is what we're going to create a door schedule from and let you see how we can put images in door schedules. Um, this is a little extra thing I forgot about that I wanted to show you guys because it might be able to be beneficial for someone to do this with a piece of furniture as well. So maybe somebody like Cam, if she does a project and rev it down the road and wants to schedule some pieces of furniture, she could do, use this as a way to do that. That's just kind of an idea. Um, we don't often put pictures in door schedules, but I thought that'd be one of the simplest ways to show that to you. But once you're in this file, of course, you want to go in and file and go save as and save the project. And, you know, I'm just going to save this as JDH1. You'll save it as your initials before you upload it. And once I'm in here and this is all saved, I'm going to go to another view because I want to go about showing you um, a way to use a different type of schedule called a note block schedule. So what I'm going to do first things first, I'm going to go down to one of these drafting views. And inside this drafting view, I'm going to go to this detail that says framing for baseboard, right? And then here's a simple little um, detail. And um, in this simple little detail, in this file I've given you, you've got three notes in here. And sometimes, instead of actually typing out a bunch of text right away or having a bunch of text all over your details, kind of like this foundation basement detail that we're going to work on as well, you see this? Sometimes it can be a pain to get all this in here, and it's a lot easier maybe to put a number and then a reference to something in here as well. So let's let's look at the easy one first. This is just a framing for baseboard detail. How would we go about creating something that would make let us show these a little easier with just numbers instead of these notes and then put this text somewhere else where we don't have to necessarily look at it on the detail, right? So let's do it. First things first, let's go up here to file. And then up in file, we're going to go to new and we're going to create a new family, right? So we're going to create an annotation family. So when we click on family, right, we'll come up here to annotations. And under annotations, there's one called generic annotations, RFT. So we're going to open that up. Once we open that up and we zoom in here to where we see our two reference planes, right? We're used to reference planes. Um, it's got this note here. And the first thing we want to do is just delete that note. It's just telling us delete this note before you use the family. And there we go. It's deleted. Then if we go over to the create tab, right? We hit create and we want to create not text, but we want to create a label, right? So a label is something that we can change as if we add it to a parameter. And you'll see what I mean in a couple of minutes. Um, so I'm just going to click on label. And by default, it should be at 330 seconds. And that's the default that we want to use, 330 seconds. I'm going to zoom into the intersection here. And I'm just going to place this label right here. And as soon as I go to place it, it's like, OK, give me a parameter to add to the label, right? And so you see, Joel, there's nothing here. What are we going to do? Well, look, we have the option to do what? We have the option to add a parameter. And when we add that parameter, the very first thing we want to realize is this is going to be something that's going to change. The number is going to be one, two, or three. It's not just going to be a type where it's just a one or just a two. We want to be able to change it. So that's why we want to create this as an instance parameter so that each instance of this note can be different. So I'm going to click on instance, and then the discipline I'm going to leave is common. And then when I get to the type of parameter, I'm going to click here, and I'm going to say this is going to be 
probably a what? Probably a number, isn't it? Is there somewhere in here? Yes, there's a number. That's the type of parameter it is. But I need to give it a name. And what I'm going to give this a name is, I'm going to call it note number. Okay, just something simple like that. Then, again, I said this is going to be a number parameter, common. And I'm going to say, okay. And once I have note number, I'm going to add that to the label. And under the label, if you look, under the sample value, which is like, if you don't put anything in, what's the default? I'm going to put a double zero. Usually, we don't have more than 99 notes on a drawing. If you've got 99 notes on a drawing, you've got way too many notes, okay? But I have seen some with more than that in certain instances, but we're not ever going to have to worry about that. So I'll put double digits in here as a sample value. And then I have to think, if I've got a number, I probably want to add some text to that because, as we said before, when we were looking at this detail framing for baseboard, that was actually a um, where there was text associated to the things we were pointing to. So let's create another parameter. We're going to go ahead and add this parameter to label. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me. Um, I need to delete that. Let's take that out. I need to add a new parameter here, and I'm going to call this note text, right? And it's also going to be an instance parameter. And the type of parameter under here that's going to be, yeah, surprise, surprise, a text, right? And um, as I do that, you know, I, I'm, I'm showing it where it's saying now, okay, um, I've, I've got this under here. It's, it's a text parameter. It's going to group parameter under text. And I'm going to say, okay, but I am not going to add the text of the note to this. I'm just going to leave it here so that I can change this information in the schedule. And you'll see what I mean in just a moment, okay? So with these two in, I'm going to hit apply and okay. And I've got these two zeros, right? And I'm going to, first of all, zoom out and say, hey, I'm going to change the tabbing on that. I'm going to make that a lot smaller. So there I go. I'm making that a little smaller. And while it's selected, I'm just going to gently tab or right, right arrow over to where it's basically right in the middle, okay? Right in the middle, just like that. And then I'm going to say, I don't want just a piece of text out there. I probably want a note or a number out there as well, right? And so while I'm in here, I'm going to say, go to create and let's use a line and maybe we can use a circle for these notes. You can use a square, you could use... Uh, a polygon with so many sides, but for us, we're just going to use a circle. That's simple because when I use a circle, I can go right to the middle. See, I can snap to my reference planes and I can say, make this thing, uh, uh, let's see, um, I'm going to say, make this zero space 0.25. Oh, that's way too big. I meant to make it an eighth, I'm sorry. So let's make this an eighth. Not a quarter in radius, but maybe an eighth. That's better. Okay, that's what I meant to do. And then again, I can come in here and I can center that up a little more. You know, it doesn't need to be perfect. So there it is, right? And I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna say file, and I'm gonna save as the current family, and I'm gonna call this, I got this note family, right? So I'll make sure I'm going to save it as that. I'm going to say save. I created one earlier just to practice. So I'm saving over that. And then I'm going to say load into project and close. Okay. So when I click on that part, all right, I've got my, my zero note. So I'm going to place it for right now. I'm going to place it right here. Right. And you're going to see, I wanted to show you this. Look at how many places I have in there when I created that note, right? I probably want to edit the family so I don't have that many places. How would I do that? Well, um, I'm going to show you a couple of things. I'm going to go to Edit Family. And when I'm in Edit Family and I go in here, I'm going to click on that label. And what can I do? I can edit the label. I'm sorry, not edit the label. But I can come in here and edit the type and say that I want to change, first of all, the width factor maybe to something like 0.75, right? 
And then um, once I do that, I can probably come in and do something like change the units, right? What if I want to change the units? Can I change the units in here? Oh, project units. Look at that. And under project units, um, I can come in here and say, um, is there a place where I can actually adjust the decimal places that I see in there? And yes, there is. But I want to do that in the next video because I want you guys to get to this point. And then I want you to see something else that we're going to have to uh, change in this particular note to make it work a little bit better, okay? So you're gonna see something else we're going to adjust here. We're gonna have to add another parameter to this, but we're gonna do it in the next video, okay?